All right, let me tell you guys a cool story. So this is my friend Apache. And this is the mule that I rode out in Colorado elk hunting. I took him and Viper out there. I took this one for my cousin to ride and I was gonna ride Viper. And I did that, but then there was a lot of days because this one is 16 two hands tall. My cousin struggled to get on there. He had a sore ankle. And uh, so I started riding. I was like, hell, I'll just ride that one. You ride Viper. And so anyway, I ended up letting him ride Viper the majority of the time. And I really bonded with Apache up there. I had a guy that wanted to buy Apache. Uh, and uh, well, since then we've become friends, but anyway. So he goes down there in the first couple weeks, him and Patchy are fine, they get along and they're having a big time and he's pulling him around with a golf cart and playing with him and riding him and everything's fine. And then at some point, I think he, he had a lady trainer come over, gonna do some work with him. She started chasing him around with some flags and shaking things at him and whatever. And apparently pissed him off. Um, he got shook up, he didn't like it, didn't trust him. Got where he wouldn't let him catch him. <clears throat> threw, the, threw, the, threw the lady trainer in the damn dirt. I mean, smacked her in there like a PVR bull. And uh, and so he never did buck my buddy, but my buddy seen what he could do. And he said, I don't need all that. So anyway, I ended up trading him for a real gentle mule that everybody can ride. <clears throat> it, it's fine, really nice. One. But that you can hunt on, shoot off of, all that kind of deal. So anyway, so he, he sends him up a little closer because uh, he's down in Florida, so he had a buddy in Kentucky. And uh, and so he uh, he sends him to his buddy in Kentucky and his buddy unloads him off the trailer, gets on there, he piles his ass up too. And uh, he's like, oh my God, I've rode horses in the rodeo. Can't buck like that. And so they're like, he just, he ain't rideable. So, all right, we'll leave him right there. So I go down there. You cannot catch this dude in the, the barn. He's trying to rip walls out. He has spun up something. Now, this is a mule that we let go in Colorado. He stood around the campsite. We walked up there, caught him, and saw him in rope. But he's done got spun up. He's done got upset about something. He's shaking. He's nervous as a cat. So I get a saddle on him and stuff, and, and I get up there on him, and I left him tied to the fence for a minute. I got up there on him, I petted him down, I talked to him, I just had a little conversation with him and just kind of let him remember my voice and I just felt his back relax. And I said, untie that rope, buddy. And he did and he, he started, he's gonna walk me around like a pony riding. This is a 16-2 mule. I said, buddy, you don't, he goes, I'll hold him if he starts bucking, he's gonna throw you. I said, you can't hold this mule. If he decides to do that, all he's gonna, the only thing's gonna happen is he's gonna throw me and jump on top of you, just throw me up here to that rope. This sucker goes to riding, spinning, sliding, Side passing, like he'd been rode yesterday, just like he's doing right now. And they had said that he was really difficult to catch. No, I don't want to get him too fast. Going out here. Let me show you guys something. And then I'll get back to my story. I mean, this dude is handy. He, I mean, he's he's a little ranch mule, you know. He's he's real handy. I mean, he'll really get get around on himself. This is a 16-2 mule too. He gets around like a little mule, or like you'd want one, or get a little quarter horse. So, anyways, so here's the thing. So today. Now, I haven't, I rode him around out there in that lot at night time. He doesn't buck me. He don't do nothing but ride around like he's supposed to. I said, well, I told y'all he rode real well. And rode him up in the trailer and I left. So no problem. So anyways, irrelevant. I have not rode him since then because we've had bad weather and this and that. And uh, I hadn't done, I ain't done nothing with him since, since that night. So today I had a bunch on my mind. There's a lot of people t talking, a lot of uh, stress in their lives and, and people talking about, you know, how depressed they are and wanting, and putting a lot, of, a lot of things. It's not depressing me. I just feel like a lot of burden, a lot of pressure. And so what I do is I go, I go ride. So I went and I rode Dottie and I went through the woods and I did all this and that or whatever, you know. 
His Cheyenne was messing around with Pedro, and you know, we had some mules that we wanted to work with, and so I, I was working, and that helps me with my business, you know. Um, that helps me keep my mind occupied, but it's work, it's a job. This mule's like a personal mule, you know, him and Viper, they're my boys, and so, anyways, <clears throat> so, so. We're, we're letting all these we're letting all these mules I'm, i am i'm here by myself but anyway katie and then we're out here earlier so i'm letting these mules go and he just well again he's supposed to be somewhat hard to catch for these folks and he was damn sure hard to catch when i went to pick him pick him up in that barn i mean he was spun up he looked like he was on damn meth and uh so anyways, which he's been real friendly since he's been here. And Cheyenne goes out and pets on him and I pet on him. And like we have been going out and petting on him and that kind of deal. And uh, shoots videos, busting ice, you know, just normal stuff. But we haven't messed with him, messed with him, you know. Um, so anyways, my point is, is that I really feel like he knew that I needed a friend. And I, I feel like he knew, knew that uh, I just needed to relax. Because like there's not really any training involved on him. If I say go go to the right, now this dude he gets he gets to go into the right. You tell him to back up, he backs up. So he's relaxed and he's fun. Now I can do some tuning and stuff on him because I ain't been messing with him for a while. But you can see, I mean, this dude this dude gets around. But anyways, so I'm not trying to catch him at all. And he just walks up and just stands there. And so I saddle him up, and he just stands there, quiet as a mouse. And I just lead him over to the round pin and get on and go to riding him. And like, I feel like he was like, and I know this is going to sound stupid and goofy and I probably shouldn't even say this publicly, but there's no other explanation because he ain't easy to catch. He has not been rode in a while. The last time he was rode, he threw a couple people on their ass and I haven't rode or messed with him other than the. 10 minutes I rode him when I went and picked him up. I haven't rode him since October when I was elk hunting. And he just acted like, hey, I mean, I didn't have no food or nothing. I'm letting him go. And he just walks up and is like, you look like you could use a friend, bro. And I mean, he's as quiet as a damn country mouse. And just want to ride around and relax. And so I got, I kind of got my head right and was relaxing. And then, and then I was kind of like, you know, I mean, this is what it is, you know. I mean, I, you know, I'm not qualified to talk to these people about this stuff, but I'm here, and I will talk to people, and I will help in whatever I can, and I will. I'm probably not the most sympathetic, and you know, I'm going to be proactive. Where a lot of people seem like. And maybe that's why some people need to hear from me, and some people need to hear from others. But I think a lot of people are like kind of like hey you know i'm 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 sad too my life is miserable too and then and they just kind of get wrapped up in that and i'm like well let's take some steps to make something happen positive so that a year from now five years from now ten years from now you're not in the same situation and things aren't getting getting worse you know and i i talked to a buddy of mine for 30 minutes today um i didn't talk to him i damn argued with him and he, but you don't understand and you don't understand and you don't understand and i'm like okay maybe i don't understand but maybe you don't understand I, 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 I you know i can't help how you got to this situation but i could help you get out of this situation and I mean, well it just ain't like it was nothing's like it was i ain't like it was there ain't nothing like it was well I, it don't have to be like it was but you still okay so my buddy and this is the part that i feel like i feel like this mule apache has helped me work it out because he with him just being so responsive and I, and I feel like maybe somebody else besides my buddy needs to hear this. And I need to call and tell him this. And he said, well, the old me's dead. The old me died. You know, it, it didn't, the old me didn't come out of this wreck. Well, I, okay. I understand feeling like that. Um, and, and not to the degree that he went through, absolutely. But I have a glimpse of understanding. And I tried to explain to him a glimpse of understanding what it's like to become a different person in the fact that 
I was known all around the world for doing martial arts and everybody I run around with martial arts and we always dressed like we were doing martial arts and we went to fight teams and we went to parties and we were hanging out with people in movies and we were hanging out with UFC fighters and my students are UFC fighters and there's fight shows and ring girls and now I'm running around riding mules and dressing like a cowboy. So that's a pretty drastic change. Um, so my friends, it took a long time for my martial arts friends to go, you're a cowboy, you're riding mules. And my cowboy friends, they go, wait, you, you do leg locks and choke people? So, I mean, it's a pretty big spectrum of two different people. I just happen to be, can be both at the same time. But I, I did do a big lifestyle change where I went from every day pretty much wearing sweats and tennis shoes and a sweatshirt to cowboy boots, blue jeans, and a vest and a button up pearl snap shirt. That's a pretty, that in itself. So absolutely not to the same level, but I mean, I did change my entire friend group, my job, what I do for a living, what I think about. My brain was 24 seven on the latest and greatest martial arts techniques and doing this and doing that to uh, mules and what I need to do to get along with mules better. And so everything I think about Everybody I talk to, the conversations I have, everything changed. But it doesn't matter. Here, here's the one sentence I want you guys to remember. And I think this is somebody that changed your life. Maybe this is somebody getting off a of drug addiction. Maybe this is somebody that stopped drinking. This maybe somebody who wants to straighten out the relationship with their wife. And, and you feel like the old you is dead. The old you is gone for better or for worse. But the new you, it still has to start living. So if the old you's dead, okay, I understand. But at some point, the new you has to start life. It don't matter if you went from a motorcycle gang to you want to be the bingo champion of the damn church choir. I, I don't know, but you need to do something and you need to put your heart into it and you need to be invested in it and you need to put some effort in there and you need to be the best at what you're doing. Just like I was, I very much want to know everything that there was to know about martial arts. Now I want to know everything there is to know about mules. And so it don't matter which one I do, but you need to be good at one or the other. You need to try something. You need to do something. You need to be with that, that friend group. So if you don't want to ride mules anymore, well, that's not a problem. There's no reason to ride a mule in, in 2020. Um, if you don't want to ride a motorcycle, don't ride a motorcycle. There's, there's no reason to ride a motorcycle in 2020 either, to be honest with you. Probably never was. But you need to find something. You can't you can't sit around and be depressed. You can't be sad. You can't think about the past. You can't wish it was like this. Or whatever it is, you know, no matter where you go, there you are. It's that simple. And if if you go and you find that you're somebody different, you don't feel the same. You don't act. The same. How many of you guys out there have been in love and absolutely ate up in love with this other person? And now, I mean, you couldn't breathe without them. And now you look at them, and you know. I, you see them in Walmart, you run down the other aisle. You know, I, I literally know somebody that I used to think, you know, was everything to me. And I literally seen them coming through Walmart. And I literally, and I'd been shopping a while. I was doing a whole big grocery list for Sabrina. And I had a basket full of shit. And I hate to shop. I hate it with a passion. I left my damn grocery cart, turned around, walked out the damn store and left. Told her she had to go get it shit herself. I ain't doing it. You know, um... So to the level, the thing is, is that your feelings can change. And you, the people that you cared about, you don't care about at all. People you loved, you can hate. Um, sports that you used to play, you don't care about. But that don't matter. You got to continue on. You got to find something new. Keep life interested. Keep things going. You know, find a new girl. Find yourself. And in and, and a statement that he said, he said, well, I don't want to be around anybody. Well, you, you might not want to be around anybody in this world or that world. But if you didn't want to be around anybody... You'd go be in Alaska by yourself and be happy to hear wolves howl. And you'd be excited about that. And people that really want to be alone, go be alone. And they're, But they're not sad about it. You know, they shun people. They don't want to be around it. There are people like that. And then other people really don't matter to them. Or they really dislike it. Or they really enjoy their own company. Those people are few and far between. But if you just simply don't want to be around people because you're not getting the reaction that you thought that you wanted from those people, find other people that you can get the reaction you're looking for from. So, I don't know if this is gonna help anybody or not help anybody, but if a part of you is done, find a, start a new part. You can continue on with whatever you wanna do. But what I can tell you guys to do, if you'll get on the back of a good mule, a friend like Apache here, 
and it seems like I want to stop. He just stops. And you get on there that, that you really feel a connection with that wants to be your friend and wants to help you. You know, I, I think it was one of their presidents or something. I don't know. It was a famous person. It's slipping my mind right at the moment because it's not important to me. But they said they, uh, there's nothing better for the inside of a man than the outside of a horse or mule. Don't matter. But anyways, that, that's a true statement. And I think this right here because you feel... A, a connection with them, a spirit with them, and um, you feel a responsibility for them, and you feel, you know, a task, you know, and, and it can be the smallest thing that instead of everything else in life that's in your way, you're like, oh, I just want to get his left foot to step over his right, and I want his right to step over his left. I just want him to, when I touch your ring, I just want him to come around. And the, the, the simple things become the big things, and it takes, it clears your mind, and then you can think freely just like I'm doing now and so you know I always want to say I appreciate Apache giving me that hour of his time and coming up to me and, and kind of wanting to be my friend and wanting to go for a ride and and just being a good boy being a good friend and uh, hanging out with me here in the snow and letting me talk to you guys and, and being there for me so if you got a mule get out of the house Get out there on it. Don't make excuses. It's 20 degrees out here. Snow. It don't matter. Just do it. Just ride. It's all good. Ain't that right, big man? He's a good boy. Now, you guys, he, like I said, and, and you can ask my buddy. He'll probably post on this comment. He was absolutely having a problem catching him. You tell me he doesn't know that I need a friend right now. Tell me that. Tell me he don't know. Look in his eyes. He knows. And he wants to be there for you. He's there for me. I guarantee you. I tell you, these things, they, they sense stuff. They know things. They sense your heart. Don't think they don't. They can see into your soul. You don't think a horse or mule sees into your soul. You're kidding yourself. They do. See y'all.